any type of manipulation goes to lumbar, thoracic, cervical, you really want to get your body in a good position um, so that it's not a lot of effort and work from you. And your hand positioning um, for, for cervical, so I'm, if I'm going to thrust on her right side, uh, my left hand is going to be on her occiput. My right hand is going to, I'm going to use um, my index finger so whatever level I may pick in terms of, so I went through my evaluation, I went through my palpation, uh, figured something doesn't move a particular level, so I'm going to show you a C12 manip. I think it's kind of the, the easiest one to learn. Um, and, and that's the, the segment I think that's her problem, and that's what I'm, I'm going to focus on. Um, so what your hand position for a C12, so you want to get right on the occiput, you want to get right on one. So you want to put your hand, your index finger, right on one. So I'm going to start her in a bit of rotation. My thumb is almost going to be parallel to her, her uh, zygomatic arch. It's going to be there. I'm going to bend my knees, and I'm going to be facing kind of almost kind of in, a, you know, in a stride stance, but facing her almost in an angle. So I'm not going to be facing her this way. I'm just going to turn this way a little bit. Now, with, with the mechanics of the, of the cervical spine, and this is pretty consistent compared to thoracic and lumbar, where it's a little controversial, um, rotation and side bending occur what? Same side, opposite side? When, so when somebody rotates, is she side bend to the same side or the opposite side? So the normal coupling, normal coupling, yeah, same side. So whether they're in flexion, whether they're in neutral, whether they're in extension, side bending and rotation always occur to the same side. So that's the normal coupling. Compared to the lumbar spine, it changes whether you're in flexion and extension. Does that sound kind of right? So I'm going to go against that coupling because I want to create a barrier. I want to kind of create a lock. Um, and the nice part, uh, the way we learned in the fellowship and, and the other continuing education courses, so I would, I would suggest learning it the osteopathic approach. They really have a nice way of creating what they call barriers, what we call resistance, to limit the amount of rotation in the manipulation, because that's really what we're concerned about is extreme rotary uh, rotation uh, movement. So the way you do that is you're going to go, so with the cervical spine, since the normal coupling is rotation and side bending to the same side, when I introduce a, a left rotation to lock it up, I'm going to use a right side bend, right? So that's going to, so if I, so if I feel her rotation, her, this is how much rotation without any side bending movement. If I just add a little bit of side bend to it, now her rotation, look how much her rotation lifts, uh, cinches up. I can feel that, that barrier even more so. If I, could even, if I wanted even more barrier where it didn't cinch it up too, I could even introduce a bit of extension and that tightens up even more. So there she's nice and wound up and the nip would be right there. Okay, um, so you're trying to add different components to limit the amount of rotation. Um, some people will require a lot, some people won't require that much. So it depends on some people who may be a little bit more mobile, and some people who may be a little bit more stiff. Okay, so what you're feeling for, so what you'll see a lot of times with people manipulating is they're, they're feeling for that barrier. So they're, they're adding a component, checking their rotation, adding a component, checking, and that's what they're feeling for. And when they feel that barrier, that's when they do the, the manipulation. And basically the, the thrust is this, it's this type of movement. It's a quick thrust. So and it's a rotation? It's a rotation. So it's like get a football and just spin it. If you want to get the quickness, Get your hands, you know how we had the drop with the lumbar spine? This is what you need to get good at, is quick, quick, quick. Okay? Alright? So again, 
So uh, since I'm going to do a right-sided manip, my left hand is going to be on the occiput. Right hand is going to be on one. My thumb is going to be around the zygomatic arch. My elbow is going to be out. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to bend my knees. Okay? And this is where I can, I can add different components. I could even add a bit of a side glide, which is a powerful uh, component when you're creating a barrier. So you don't want to, and this is kind of becomes the art of manipulation, is that you don't want to wind someone up so tight that you got nothing, and then it gets uncomfortable for the patient. So number one, like with the lumbar spine, you want to make sure it's comfortable, okay? And so if you go in there and you really wind them up too much, then you're, you, it's not going to be comfortable. They're going to be in pain, and you don't want them to be in pain. So you're, you're playing with all the different components to see which one that you can add that's most comfortable, okay? Are you okay there? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and so what you do is you just add feeling... Oh. <laughs> so, uh, to, to manipulate left, I'm going to have my hand on her right hand side. So, right on, right on the occiput. I'm going to come in. Putting on her O1. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, here. So, I'm going to start. I'm going to start in a little bit of rotation. Side bend her a little bit. How are you? Mm -hmm. you okay? I think something ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one wasn't as audible as this side, mm -hmm. but uh, even in my setup, there was already a little bit of an audible.